warm and graceful afternoon to one and all. May I, I will request Mr. P. Karunaniti, Senior Vice President, LMB Pharmaceutical Limited, to introduce our today's eminent speaker. Good evening to all the veterinarians who are participating and my fellow colleagues. It's my great opportunity to introduce Dr. Suresh Kumar Jirwal. Actually, today's webinar subject is about ophthalmology, which is not very popular in uh, animal health uh, sector. In human, maybe a big sector, but not in animal health. So when we first interacted with Dr. Jirwal, we come to know that there are many aspects. And he was just explaining that, you know, by uh, for field veterinarians, by following some simple procedure, they can make the animal uh, get the vision back. So therefore, it actually gave a lot of motivation for us to conduct this webinar. So Dr. Suresh Kumar Jirwal is an assistant professor, Department of Veterinary Surgery and Radiology in Rajuvas, working in Bikaner. He is born in 1st March of 1972 in Devrod, Junjuno. It is in Rajasthan. He is a renowned veterinary surgeon for 20 years. He became the first veterinary surgeon of Rajasthan state to perform successful cataract surgery by pharma emulsification, FACO emulsification method in dogs. That is the first time in India. So that is what gave a lot of enthusiasm for us to do a webinar with Dr. Suresh Jirwal. He is serving in College of Veterinary and Animal Science, Bikaner, since 2014. He strengthened the skill and presented his work of ophthalmology at different platforms and disseminated his knowledge. To extend the wings of ophthalmology unit and contacted and convinced management of Parmarth Relief Society Jodhpur regarding ophthalmic specialty developed at Sivas, Bikaner campus. Before joining university as an assistant professor, Dr. Jirwal was serving as a veterinary officer in Department of Animal Health, Animal Husbandry for almost 14 years. And he also received appreciation from district collector Bodmer in Rajasthan for the year 2001 for his excellent services rendered to the society, former society. As a veterinary surgeon, he served in College of Veterinary and Animal Science, Bikaner, from 2001 to 2005 as an instructor. And during that period, he contributed a lot in small and, small and large animal surgery, including radiology, ultrasonography, techniques of anesthology, and ophthalmology. He screened more than 2,000 blind cattle for various ophthalmological disorders by thorough clinical and ophthalmological examination since 2018. It's a very, very high number for a field veterinarian. He performed surgery for various diverse ophthalmic affections in cattle at Gosala, including extra capsular cataract surgery for treatment of cataract in cattle. He has guided 10 students for their masters in research and has 76 scientific publications to his credit and attended many conferences, symposium, workshop. Maybe this is what might have motivated him to extend his research in his spe specialty area. Dr. Jirwal has received various awards. I would like to name few. He was awarded with letter of, letter of appreciation by district administration board mayor for his best clinical and administrative extension services in animal husbandry during the drought period in 2001. And he was awarded on the occasion of Independence Day 2015 by Honorable Vice Chancellor of Rajuas for successful, successfully performing cataract surgeries in canine using operating microscope. He was awarded a gold medal for the best research paper titled Clinical Evaluation of Electroretinopathy for various ophthalmic affections in dog, a study of 12 cases, which was presented in ophthalmology session during 41st Annual Congress, ISVS, and National Symposium, which is conducted at Tirupadi in December 2017. He was also awarded on the occasion of Republic Day in 2018 by Honorable VC 
Raju Vaz and the district administration Bikaner for being awarded gold medal for the best research paper on 41st annual Congress ISVS at Tripadi in 2017. Dr. Jirwal was also awarded second consecutive gold medal for the best research paper entitled Ophthalmological Diagnosis and Surgical Management of Cataract in Dogs. The same was presented on 42nd Annual Congress, ISVS and National Symposium conducted in Nausari, Gujarat in 2018 November. And again, he was bestowed with gold medal for the best clinician award during 43rd Annual Congress, ISVS and National Symposium at Lala Lajpatra University of Veterinary and Animal Science, Hisar. So consecutively for 2017, 2018 and 2019, all three years, he has been awarded with gold medal. So that was his uh, contribution to the Animal Health Society. So these words are not sufficient to describe his entire contribution. So we are having such a multi-talented personality with us to enrich the knowledge of today's participant. So thank you very much, Dr. Jirwal. And over to Dr. Jirwal to proceed his presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Shinde? Yes, sir. You can see, sir. Uh, should I start? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, hello, everyone. And uh, I welcome to one and all in today's webinar. Uh, as introduced uh, by uh, senior Olympic executive, uh, Mr. P. Karunaniti, uh, myself, Dr. S. K. Jirwa, and uh, presently working in the Department of Veterinary Surgery and Radiology, uh, CVSB Kaner. And I would like to uh, thank Team Alambic and especially to Dr. Santos Sinde, who contacted me and uh, gave me uh, an opportunity to interact uh, with uh, all of you uh, on this uh, platform. Actually, uh, as told by uh, Mr. Karunaniti, this ophthalmology department uh, establishment was uh, done in our department in 2015 under AINP Dimiska, uh, which was an ICR funded project. And uh, the credit, the sole credit for establishing this ophthalmology unit in this department goes to our mentor, uh, Dr. Professor uh, T.K. Gehlot, uh, who is a renowned scientist, I think, uh, most of you or all of you might be knowing him. And he is our mentor and he established this project with the uh, aim he was having a zeal that at least uh, uh, we should start ophthalmology at our department, which, which uh, was lacking because of the facilities. And as soon as we got the facilities from in Pedimiska, uh, we were having wings and uh, we started flying like anything and uh, we done a lot of job. And uh, as told uh, by Dr. Karunanithi that uh, as an outreach program of the university, we started doing uh, ophthalmic surgeries at a, a remote, uh, about 230 to 50 kilometers away from Bikaner at Jodhpur in a gosala that is a cow shelter. And uh, through this gosala, we uh, got opportunity to serve the blind cattle and treat diverse ophthalmic affections of cattle over there. So uh, this webinar is uh, just to disseminate uh, the knowledge gained in this field uh, during these years uh, of uh, working my ophthalmology. So today I will try to simply explain the diagnostic and surgical procedures involved in performing uh, ophthalmic uh, surgery. Uh, I would not uh, like to uh, elaborate anything because if it is not possible, to uh, sum up um, the complete ophthalmological diagnosis and surgical procedure 
in one webinar so i would just give an outline that at least uh, our new budding vets or uh, the veterinarians uh, doing uh, practice in field uh, they should have an idea that how to make uh, a diagnosis and how simply uh, the resources they are having they can treat the ocular affections so i hope that uh, this webinar will be worth viewing and uh, may help the veterinarians to learn and uh, adopt the practical management on ophthalmology even in the field conditions so as you can see in this slide that uh, uh, our work uh, got sufficient media coverage and uh, uh, both in print media and in digital media and this helped us to make people aware regarding our ocular affections uh, in cattle and now we are receiving a lots of cases uh, from all over the rajasthan and also from neighboring states now in this uh, you can see that uh, this is a short video of cataract surgery uh, we are performing over there i think this will work you can see here that uh, uh, at this goshala uh, we started the cataract surgery uh, using operating microscope and the trust at goshala has provided us this microscope and other surgical instruments also and very soon uh, they uh, might be having phacoemic emulsification and will start that and recently they have uh, brought one large animal anesthesia machine that will help us to perform uh, phaco emulsification in large animals so you can see here this uh, they have established a, a an operating uh, ophthalmic ot our mentor professor tk galot and his mentor dr ds johan i was it was my privilege to perform this cataract surgery in front of these two uh, legends <clears throat> and you can see here that we are performing this under operating microscope and uh, i tell you this is very simple and if you are having this operating microscope and a, a little practice you can uh, give vision to many of the cataractous eyes in cattle so uh, here you can see uh, another video that uh, just have a look at this video sorry you can see that uh, this is a blind cattle ward uh, in that gosala and uh, these cattle blind cattle are approaching towards the manger for feed but lack of vision i tell you Uh, will force them on a endless walk they will keep circling like this and uh, not going to reach in the nearest manger here you can see the manger is here but uh, until unless somebody comes and guide them they are not going to reach up to the uh, manger and i tell you many although many of them are having uh, some irreparable Uh, ophthalmic affections like retinal degeneration and dysfunction of retina but many of them are also having some treatable cause of blindness that can be treated and they can get a good vision so let's take today's webinar as an eye opener for the benefit of these helpless cattle now see this uh, these beautiful eyes uh, you can see please uh, look for a moment then we will proceed further these beautiful attractive pictures how soothing they are to your eyes just have a look a glimpse of these beautiful pictures and whenever i uh, saw uh, i see such pictures i always appreciate the color of their iris you can see the color of their iris be it in human being or be it in animals uh, you can appreciate
the color of eye that is because of iris the clarity of cornea you can see how clear is the cornea the symmetry of pupil both the pupils are very much symmetrical and the position of eyeball and eyelids with the orbit and uh, i have shown you this slide that uh, because in uh, coming 50 minutes you might feel stress at your eyes as pictures coming up might not be having this soothing effect on your eyes so let's move to the next slide now you can see the uh, in these pictures you can perceive the uh, ocular pain that is agony of animals and i think all those who can see this slide can witness the importance of uh, vision and ultimately the eyes and all those who ever encountered a foreign body uh, or conjunctivitis in their eyes can perceive the pain and its complication in the eye the story is same for animals it is not different at all but the matter is that they cannot exhibit the pain with the intensity a human does we start crying we are doing lots of halla ulla and tell you okay there is something in our eyes and how does animal will tell he will just rub his eyes to the wall or to any tree and just there will be continuous lacrimation but nobody is going to care because until unless uh, they this affects the production the uh, owner or livestock owner is not going to take care of it but being human and above all the custodian of animal health as a veterinarian we should give equal importance to this aspect also you can see many of these uh, affections can be treated and the vision can be regained now before uh, moving ahead let's see inside the organ about which we are going to discuss today and it is just a recapitulation of our knowledge because uh, all of us are veterinarian and i know uh, all of us are knowing the structure but just uh, a recapitulation of our uh, knowledge and you can see here the outermost coat or a fibrous coat the posterior part is known as sclera and anterior one is clear cornea this is a transparent cornea and a you can see the anterior and posterior chamber this is anterior chamber then this is posterior chamber having uh, aqueous filled with aqueous and just behind this uh, you will find this lens by convex lens will be there uh, and concealed in the anterior and posterior lens capsule and beyond this is a biggest organ you can say of the body that is vitreous vitreous body is there that keeps the lens in its position and also responsible to maintain the uh, maintain the eyeball in its uh, shape and size and uh, beyond that is choroid next layer to sclera is choroid and uh, just uh, in front of choroid is the retina here you can see this is a retina this is the sensible a uh, photosensitive uh, photosensitive uh, vision where vision is formed and uh, from here the impulses are moved through the optic nerve brain and image so just the capitulation of our knowledge now uh, i have divided this presentation into two halves uh, first one is uh, ocular examination and uh, another one is a little about some oc uh, ocular affections surgical treatment and uh, i tell you that early and correct diagnosis of ocular disorders uh, is very essential and is a requisite condition for successful uh, clinical results and the success of your surgery totally relies on how accurately you have diagnosed the thing how accurately you have diagnosed the problem so i consider that ocular examination should include this eight point program for successful completion i always go i always adapt this eight point program and today uh, we will not discuss with the fundus because it is it itself 
can have a big webinar and we will just touch it but not elaborately so first one is gross examination then go for uh, vision assessment then eyelid and eyelashes conjunctiva cornea anterior chamber and pupil and lens and i tell you most of the affections in cattle they are uh, um, related to uh, eyelid and eyelashes conjunctiva cornea anterior chamber iris and pupil and lens most of the lesions and because the uh, affections that are with the fundus and are congenital they are usually irreparable and because uh, when we are getting the animal for treatment it's too late and the retina has completely degeneration degenerated so it cannot be cured so let's start with the gross examination and for gross examination uh, <clears throat> you can start gross examination as the animal is presented to you and uh, always start your examination from a distance as the animal is approaching to you while doing gross examination always take a complete history from the owner and try to correlate it uh, with the clinical examinations you are uh, doing and from a distance as the animal is uh, approaching to you just check these things uh, i will discuss these uh, one by one first of all you can check the redness in eyes that how uh, the eyes how much the eyes are red you can uh, judge the gravity of redness and location of redness here you can see in this slide that uh, uh, different types of redness you can see this this is the redness because of uveitis you can find this in in uh, many cases and uh, here you will see that uh, although the cornea is almost clear it is not uh, having any, any opacity but beyond the cornea there is redness and here you can see that the corneal neovascularization there corneal opacity is there and there is conjunctival injection of the blood vessels you can see and to differentiate with the blood vessels you should know that if the blood vessels are uh, thin and they are having tortuous uh, round uh, management just near to the uh, sclera then they are uh, you can say that it is the conjunctival blood vessels and if they are deep seated they will be thick uh, blood vessels and having a covering a long distance before coiling up and you can see here the neovascularization these blood vessels approaching under the cornea and another thing is uh, you can just the pain now the pain in animals i will be exhibited by particularly by blepharic spasm you will see that the animal is not opening its eye uh, eyelids or it's blinking its eyelids usually you, you will not find this instance in the animals uh, the uh, voluntary uh, in uh, blepharic spasm is usually not exhibited in the animals but if it is having any kind of pain in the eye then blepharo uh, blepharo spasm and uh, you will get some kind of discharge epiphora can be seen there you can see how much the mucoid discharge and a strong blepharo spasm the eye is closed tightly that this animal is not going to open the eye and uh, usually uh, this signals the pain and inflammation therefore uh, you should recognize uh, uh, and or examine the cause what is the root cause behind the blepharo spasm so from a distance you can check the blepharo spasm and while examining the animal from a uh, nearer side from near you can check what causes this blepharo spasm and as i told you essential or primary blepharo spasm appears rare in animals so and it is usually blepharo spasm is usually mediated by reflex uh, involving branches of trigeminal nerve within the cornea and conjunctiva that means there might be some problem at corneal or conjunctival region or and along with the innervations of 
facial nerve that stimulates the blepharospasm and the source of uh, pain can be within the orbit eyelid conjunctiva uh, cornea iris and ciliary body so usually uh, you will find that the source is here and the uh, if we uh, search for the pain in lens vitreous retina choroid then i tell you apparently the pain receptors do not exist in these areas that is in lens vitreous and retina that means if there is blepharospasm there might be some problem at cornea sclera eyelids and conjunctiva up to ciliary body then you can check for the position of eyelids that uh, uh, is there any problem with the eyelid or is there any laceration or any kind of blepharitis you can check either uh, from a distance and next you have to check from a distance is any kind of discharge you can see this animal is having a clear discharge that means up to now there is some root cause but no infection you will find a clear corneal uh, discharge a clear ocular discharge and here again you can see the mucoid discharge is there and you have to differentiate these things and uh, usually uh, we divide uh, this discharge into uh, serous mucus or mucopurulent here you can see the mucopurulent discharge is there and uh, i tell you ocular discharge is a clinical sign of uh, conjunctivitis or eye diseases or nasolacrimal diseases or corneal diseases so trace out for the cause of discharge just viewing at the uh, discharge we will set in our mind that as soon as we will approach to the animal we will check for the cause of discharge now next is uh, you can check for pupil assessment you can judge the uh, symmetry of the pupil and just check for the pupillary margins here you can check for pupillary margins that either the pupil is dilated or it is closed here you can say you you can see there is meiosis of the pupil and the pupil is constricted and uh, you can even check and here you can see the pupil is contrary dilated and in both cases we will discuss in coming slides when it is dilated and when it is constricted but uh, you should also check for the color symmetry of the uh, iris and the uh, color of the iris is there any change in the iris then the important thing is that when it comes closer to you always check for anterior or posterior synesthesia what is anterior synesthesia when the iris is having attachment with the cornea this is known as anterior synesthesia and when it when it adheres to the lens then it is known as posterior synesthesia so always look for this and when it will be adhered it will having a irregular margins then you can check for globe symmetry shape and size here you can see you can uh, view this uh, slide and see that the globe is uh, not symmetrical here exophthalmia you can see in this eye left eye and right eye is okay and here you can see the proptosis so from a distance you can judge okay this the cattle is having proptosis this is having exophthalmia <clears throat> then of course vision when it is approaching to you then uh, you should judge whether it is uh, bumping with the walls or walking straight or having a circular movement so all these are signs of some visual hamperedness and if there is any uh, hamperedness in the vision then it might refuse to walk it might bump into the object and it might have a uh, very balanced gait uh, but you know they will walk with very sensitively then when the animal comes closer to you then you can have a, a closer examination by uh, for you can by looking for the periocular injury or uh, some kind of lesion 
and here when the animal is very close to you can you can check the clarity of uh, cornea and uh, even uh, for uh, opacity of the lens can be checked then conjectival appearance and foreign body or ocular discharge if any they can also be checked or here now uh, if you are uh, examining any animal from uh, uh, you can say that uh, if you are examining an individual animal then it's okay you can uh, perform all these things but if uh, it happens to be uh, examination in a cow shelter where thousands of cattle are there and you have to sort out that which one of these cattle can be uh, having a treatable cause of blindness. Whenever you are in a ward of blind animals, then uh, it's not possible that you should uh, restrain each and individual animal and you should check over there. Then it is better to screen them without restraining as we do, that we always enter in, into the ward and we just have a look that what type of eyes are these. So screening means if the eye uh, is showing a clear tapetal reflex and pupil is dilated. Okay, pupil is dilated, having a clear cut uh, fundus and a dilated pupil, then you can sort it out. Okay, uh, this animal might be having some retinal problems or some cortical blindness. So better uh, you should examine it in the second chance. Primarily, I always insist that primarily you should check for dermoids, then cataract, any kind of lacerations, any kind of, as I have told you in gross examination, any kind of blepharospasm spasm or any kind of discharge. If you are getting such kind of cases, I tell you they can be treated. So always give them priority and the animal that is having a clear uh, Tapetal reflex from far and you can see pupil is dilated and is blind. Then give it a secondary preference and you can check it secondarily. Now, uh, for uh, vision assessment or some neuroophthalmic examinations, uh, we have uh, just set a procedure, a protocol that these are some uh, examinations that are must to be done in case of blind animals, particularly in case of blind animals and where the cause of blindness or where any ocular affection is visible from a distance, then you need not to perform all these examinations or particularly the examination of your interest or you think that yes, this will help in uh, us in diagnosis, you perform only that. But from just from a study purpose, I am just explaining all the examination procedures that yes, if a budding vet needs, he should perform all these examinations. Now, first one is Minas reflex test. Minas reflex test is very simple. It, it can be performed by making a menacing gesture towards the uh, animal eye, but care should be taken that we should not create a air current or we should not touch the vibration eyelids. We should not touch the eyelids and a positive response will make the animal blink or move its head away from the stimulus. Now, this uh, what, what does this reflex test indicate? This will evaluate the optic nerve, the facial nerve and the abducens nerve. And if it is having a positive reflex, that means all the uh, um, optic nerve, uh, all nerve involved, that is optic nerve, facial nerve and abducens nerve are working all fine. And there is no problem and if it is having negative then you can check for further examination that there might be some problem with the these optic nerve or uh, facial nerve or abducens nerve then next examination is uh, corneal reflex test corneal reflex test is uh, particularly uh, performed by making a uh, just touching the uh, cornea with a, a wisp of cotton and uh, uh, you should um, um, you should not touch the eyelids or uh, always try to take the wisp near to the eye from the medial or lateral canthus not from the 
visual axis if you will take it from the visual axis and if the animal is having vision and a non responsive cornea both are two different things please mind that these both are two different th things the animal might be seeing but the cranial nerve fifth or cranial nerve sixth or cranial nerve seventh might not be functioning and the cornea might not be sensitive what will cause this uh, if the cornea is not sensitive what will happen there will be dryness of cornea because the uh, impulses will not be sent to the brain and there will be no blinking of the eyes and ultimately this uh, non responsive cornea can non sensitive cornea can lead to dryness so always conduct this test by taking the wisp near to the eye from either from the lateral side or from the medial side not from the visual axis and if it is blinking the eye that shows that it is having a positive corneal reflex and if it does not blink the eye that that means there is some problem with the cranial nerves now here you can see pupillary light reflex test very simple uh, uh, a very simplified test it can be performed uh, by just directing a bright light beam on the eyes and uh, constriction of the pupil here you can see that as soon as we throw the light it will constrict the pupil that shows uh, that the pupil is responsive uh, pupil is responsive that means the retina is responsive and cranial nerve second and third are responsive and even the response is going up to the midbrain and iris sphincter muscles constricts the pupil and here in case of negative response you will see that pupil still remains dilated there is no response from the pupil that means either the retina is not functional or if the retina is functional there is some problem with the iris sphincter muscles then the next examination is laser or photic blink uh, blink response it is very simple uh, examination and just a bright light is shown uh, into the uh, eyes uh, which uh, should uh, give um, the involuntary blinking and closing of the eyelids and i tell you this is a subcortical uh, reflex which means that it will still be present in animals who are blind due to disease of visual cortex if there is any problem in the visual cortex this laser or photopic blink might be positive but the animal might be blind here you can see that in a positive case it will blink the eye and in uh, in a negative response no response is shown by the eye no blinking of the eyes and uh, in the obstacle test of course as we have discussed earlier while animal is approaching uh, towards you you can check if it is bumping in the walls or if it is having any problem in the gate if it is having in any altered gate or uh, any accentuated uh, gate or uh, it simply refuses to move that means the animal is having some problem with the visa now here is uh, another uh, ophthalmic examination uh, firmer tear test it is very important uh, uh, examination uh, for ocular examination for most of the uh, ocular diseases and i tell you you should perform uh, this firmer tear test in every eye that is having any kind of uh, secretion or even if it is there is uh, any dryness you see that okay the animal appears to be dry uh, having dry eye then you have to perform this uh, sirmer tear test it is the strip is available in the readily available in the market you can uh, buy this and uh, this uh, strip is placed in the uh, medio ventral uh, to lateral third of the palpebral conjunctival fornix for 1 minute and the readings are taken and if it is more than 20 20 to 30 it is approaching 20 uh, more than 20 then it means there is epiphora and if it is less than 5 
then it means there is dry eye and no tears are produced. Another test, fluorescent dye test, you can see this strip is also uh, available in market and the fluorescent stain is there on the strip and you simply put this strip under the conjunctival fornix or upper even uh, on the upper eyelid. Uh, try to uh, escape that uh, it should not touch the cornea and uh, just hold the eyelids and uh, if there is any problem or any corneal ulcer then the stain will be taken and you will find this kind of picture in the eye and if there is no uh, any injury into the uh, corneal epithelium then you will see a negative fluorescent dye test and the cornea will appear this much clear and no stain will be taken up. Now this is ophthalmoscopic uh, uh, examination and uh, as uh, a, this is a close examination and uh, direct ophthalmoscopy uh, is uh, uh, performed in uh, animals just to uh, have an examination of right from cornea to the fundus. That means anterior and posterior segment both can be uh, checked by uh, direct ophthalmoscopy. You can check and uh, for uh, viewing the uh, different parts of the eye, you have to adjust the uh, diopter size according to the part being viewed. This ophthalmoscope is having uh, one wheel over here that you have to slide over and adjust the diopter size of the ophthalmoscope and that will give you a better vision uh, of the fundus and different powers you can see here and that that means if you are examining the cornea then you have to set the diopter at plus 20 diopter going into the anterior chamber then plus 15 moving near to the lens plus 12 diopter in the posterior aspect of lens you have to adjust it to the 8 and as you reach to the retina you have to adjust it up to minus 3 diopter. This is indirect uh, ophthalmoscopy and uh, it can be routinely done in cattle. and uh, uh, a new vet should develop a habit. I tell you to develop a habit, you should examine the eyes of all the animals, all the animals, all the cattle presented to you. If you want to develop, uh, if you want to see the fundus and uh, gain the knowledge regarding the fundus, you have to check the uh, fundus of every animal. That means first you should know uh, what, how does a healthy fundus look like. Then you can uh, be able to differentiate between the affected and healthy uh, fundus. So always examine the, try to examine the fundus. Then uh, uh, another examination of the eye is to measure the intraocular pressure of the eye. Uh, this is measured by uh, uh, different types of tonometers. Uh, they are uh, available for veterinary. Here you can see uh, uh, this your tonometer, then tonopan, then tonovat is there. Uh, these three types, and we are using this uh, non-contact uh, tonometer. Uh, so in here, in this tonometer, you need not to touch the cornea of the animal, and in rest of these three you have to touch the cornea. And uh, many a times the animal may not allow you to touch the cornea, but in case of uh, non-contact tonometer, just a puff of air is uh, thrown onto the cornea and that inflates the cornea and a measurement is exhibited or uh, shown over here. And we take three uh, consecutive uh, uh, readings and a average of three consecutive readings is shown here and that tells the intraocular pressure of the animal, animal's eye. Then a little about instrumentation. Uh, although we have uh, shown many instruments in uh, previous slides, but a uh, few instruments uh, that are required, essentially required are uh, as shown here, 
these are thermal tear strips as i told you they thermal tear and fluorescent dye strip they are readily available in the market you can purchase from there and always have a ready stock of uh, these strips you never know when you will be presented with a case and at that time you might not be having this strip so always procure these strips have at your uh, disposal so that you can check the uh, thermal tear test uh, the discharge in the eye and the corneal uh, health healthness you can check now this is a operating microscope and uh, i tell you this is very essential uh, instrument for uh, uh, performing cataract surgery or performing any uh, ophthalmic surgery that need a magnification particularly that needs a magnification even in cases of uh, simple dermoids you will see that many times uh, you will get cases of dermoid uh, that will be having their attachment with the cornea now if they are palpebral Uh, having uh, attachment only with the eyelids that is either palpebral or uh, um, outside the eye then you can simply incise with even without magnification but if you are getting a case of dermoid that is having attachment with the cornea and you have to perform superficial keratotomy then you need a source of magnification and for that you need this operating microscope and uh, uh, these are direct and indirect uh, ophthalmoscope you can see here this is direct ophthalmoscope and uh, this is indirect ophthalmoscope and this in uh, indirect ophthalmoscope headgear need 120 diopter lens in between your uh, eyes uh, in your headgear and in the eye of the animal and this is a simple surgical set uh, i tell you you need not to have as in case of uh, i think uh, most of vets know that how if you are going to perform a orthopedic surgery then you have to procure many instruments different types of uh, pins and drills and pin chucks and you need many things and according to the size of bone and here simply if you are having these instruments and simple some forceps some tying forceps scissors a small scissor then i speculum okay then uh, this uh, uh, handle bp handle uh, bp handle is here and you can have needle holder this is a simple needle holder and nucleus rotators and corneal forceps okay and these are castrovisio uh, um, forceps used in case of cataract surgery for capsular axis so these are some simple instruments that can be procured for ophthalmic surgery now take a break now 32 slides have passed and uh, my friend is telling to take a break you can also have a sip of water <clears throat> okay now let's come back <clears throat> so uh, now the second portion of our webinar that is surgical management of some ocular affections uh, uh, that are to be performed mm -hmm. for selected cases we will discuss here that some of the cases that can be corrected and uh, i tell you the surgical decision whether to go for surgery or not is governed by many factors say for economic factor the owner will tell okay i am not having how much uh, it will cost to just to remove a dermoid a simple case of dermoid is there a calf has been presented to you with a case of dermoid and he will simply the owner will ask his first question as how much it will cost and your answer will decide whether he will opt for surgery or not so in case of cattle ophthalmology i always say it's a service and uh, unlike uh, the canine ophthalmology canine ophthalmology also it's uh, paying its and rewarding a lot but in case of cattle it is just a service of these uh, 
blind creatures or these helpless creatures you can uh, if you can do then it's better that you should not try to earn much from these and uh, another is general health of animal if uh, it will allow the surgery or not then uh, presence of any coexisting ocular diseases and the most important is uh, technical expertise of the individual how much you are expert in performing these ocular uh, surgeries now take the simplest uh, ocular affection is conjunctival edema or chemosis you will be presented many a times with a strongly closed uh, eyelids then you will uh, if even you will try to uh, open the eyelids with force you will not be able to open the eyelids that means there is strong blepharospasm and the case might be of conjunctival edema here you can see the conjunctival edema or chemosis the eye is the uh, palpebral conjunctiva is completely swollen up <clears throat> but to examine this for first instance you, what you have to do you have to examine that what causes chemosis or uh, this conjunctival edema and for this you have to open the eyelids and it is not simply uh, possible to open the eyelids manually until unless you go for ocular auriculopalpebral nerve block you have to give a local anesthesia at the and block the auriculopalpebral nerve that will allow you to examine the uh, globe easily and you will be able to uh, search for any foreign body or uh, any source of uh, inflammation of the conjunctiva over there and here you can see that the needle is inserted in front of base of the ear base of the ear at the end of zygomatic arch and it introduced until it point uh, at the dorsal border of the arch here you can see here you have to insert the needle and just inject 2 3 ml or 2 5 ml of local lignocaine hydrochloride and that will allow you to open the eyelids easily and that will help you to examine the globe easily now if uh, we go for treatment Uh, first of all you have to find out whether there is any foreign body in it and if you have uh, removed the foreign body and uh, you find that uh, there is no corneal ulcer why i am telling no corneal ulcer you always go for fluorescent dye test check there is no corneal ulcer make sure there is no corneal ulcer and if there is no corneal ulcer you can go for the antibiotic along with steroids otherwise if there is any corneal ulcer always avoid uh, use of steroids so in case there is no corneal ulcer then you can use the any antibiotic like moxifloxacin uh, with dexamethasone three drops for six times per day for about two weeks that will give you a better result and you have to give some anti inflammatory uh, eye drops uh, for about one week and another combination of antibiotic is neosporin Uh, with hydrocortisone ointment that can be topically given for three times a day for about one week that will uh, and proper monitoring of such type of cases is very important you have to daily clean up the eyes you have to daily clean up the eyes with normal saline and you have to check how much improvement is there daily monitoring of such cases is very important and it uh, might be there that at the first instance you miss any foreign body and you find that yes it is the condition is aggravating then again check for some kind of foreign bodies so monitoring is very important another uh, case is uh, keratitis that is a uh, simple inflammation of the cornea is there and uh, you will see that again here you have to perform the fluorescent dye test so initially as i was telling you the examination is very important so you have to perform the fluorescent dye test to detect any uh, corneal epithelial defect and then if there is no corneal defect no ulcer then you can steroids you can use steroids and use uh, antibiotic and anti inflammatory eye uh, drops then polyvinyl alcohol and povidine iodine drops for prevention of dryness of the eye 
and subconjunctural injection of dexa methadone along with gentamicin on alternate day three injections can be given that will relieve this keratitis and as i uh, told you that always search for the cause and if there is any systemic cause for keratitis the keratitis might be a manifestation of some systemic disease in cattle body and if there is any systemic disease like in calf you will find that in case of thylariosis you can see the keratitis and in even in case of uh, um, many other systemic infections the animals might be suffering with the uh, uteritis say for uh, um, uh, example uh, metritis and then even in that case you will find the clinical manifestation of keratitis in cattle's eye then another case uh, which uh, usually received in the cattle is uh, eyelid lacerations you will receive such cases when uh, the um, usually the cattle are having uh, free pasture grazing they might get injury to their eyes or um, the eye, uh, eyelids may be lacerated and as we know that eyelids are having uh, a good uh, blood supply and injuries to them injuries to the eyelids uh, rapidly uh, heals but on the other side they swell up rapidly so if the case you have received is after uh, 12 hours then you will see that there is lot of inflammation and what will that inflammation cause that inflammation will distort the normal position of the eyelids so always avoid in such cases you should avoid or delay the surgery and usually i always follow uh, that uh, some of the uh, points that should be followed before uh, going for taking any decision for uh, this kind of lacerations is that that if it is uh, uh, having swelling you should uh, avoid uh, the surgery and always if you have taken uh, the decision that you have to go for surgery then sutures in the eyelid must be kept away from the globe as a general rule whenever you are suturing the eyelids always consider the health of the cornea you might be suturing the uh, eyelids but you might be causing injury to the cornea so that will be a more um, um, poor condition that your cornea will be lost so always keep the sutures away from the globe and the margins should always be accurately reposed the eyelid margins that is very important if you are uh, just uh, suturing the eyelids roughly then what will cause uh, the margins of the eyelid should not be equal and it may cause the entro uh, ectropion and there will be continuous uh, lacrimation continuous ocular discharge from tear discharge from these eyes and so always take the uh, proper margin uh, of the eyelids maintain the normal anatomy of the eyelid and here you can see the uh, lower eyelid laceration then just subconjunctival uh, suturing has been done and after the skin suturing should be done so eyelids are sutured always in a two layer two layer pattern is adopted uh, pre, uh, first layer is the uh, subconjunctival suturing and another one is by giving the uh, outer skin suturing another case uh, you might uh, receive is eyelid abscesses you will receive many uh, cases of such kind of uh, uh, periocular abscesses periocular abscesses uh, that might be uh, affecting lower eyelid or you can see the upper eyelid and all these abscesses should be treat should be treated at uh, uh, first preference because if they linger on they might press the inside or they might rupture the inside and may injure the cornea also so always give a incision at the dependent uh, portion and then open the abscess 
then flushing of the abscess cavity simple as we are doing with the another uh, abscesses and after 60 days you can see here the eye is looking very much normal and no problem with them so this is a simple treatment although but you should always take care while uh, giving incision that you should not penetrate the conjunctiva palpebral conjunctiva should not be penetrated then corneal ulcer uh, you might be getting some cases of corneal ulcer then corneal ulcer can be treated by uh, simply if you want to give anti inflammatory and anti biotics and um, you can if you can monitor it daily then uh, also they can be treated otherwise you have to go for tarsography close the eyelids close the eyelids for about 7 days to 10 days and uh, that will help in uh, healing of the uh, um, uh, epithelium of the cornea and here you can see that we perform serum tear test and you can see lots of uh, epiphora is there then uh, auriculopalpebral nerve block is done the, before performing for uh, tarsography then you can go for fluorescent dye test to rule out uh, to confirm the uh, corneal ulcer and here you can see that the corneal ulcer has taken the stain and the fluorescent dye test stain has been taken and this is positive and if uh, this tarsography is performed by simply giving mattress suture over the eyelids and uh, open these sutures after about 7 to 10 days and you will see that the cornea is healed after 10 days you can see this type of uh, image you will see after 10 days when you open the sutures now again check for fluorescent dye test so after about 10 to uh, 15 days you will see that the uh, epithelial uh, layer that was injured has been healed up and you will find a negative uh, fluorescent dye test and after 16 days you will see that the cornea has become clear although you will see the new vascularization uh, uh, in the surrounding of the corneal ulcer might be seen and uh, another uh, treatment for corneal ulcer is third eyelid flap uh, placement method and uh, i think that in field conditions where uh, you cannot uh, observe the animal uh, uh, daily so you can go for uh, this eyelid placement uh, flap placement method and you just put the third eyelid over the uh, um, uh, over the corneal ulcer and suture it in the uh, uh, upper eyelid and the procedure is very simple you can see here the lots of blepharospasm is there and the firmal tear test is showing epiphora again we perform fluorescent dye test so these are routine test they should be performed you should not miss this test okay i i can see that yes it is ulcer but even then you have to confirm it by the fluorescent dye test to look for the gravity of ulcer how big it is how much cornea is uh, how much cornea is damaged you have to uh, diagnose that properly and for that you have to perform fluorescent dye test and uh, again auriculopalpebral nerve block should be uh, made and even retrovulvar nerve block can be given here you can see retrovulvar nerve block is being given by using lignocaine hydrochloride and uh, after this uh, you can see that uh, third eyelid placement is being done here you just uh, uh, have a bite of the third eyelid and just suture it over the upper eyelid you can see here it is being sutured tag it in the upper eyelid and this tarsography is done and always open it after 10 to 15 days you might find this uh, uh, new vascularization or some kind of uveitic changes might be there but you will appreciate that uh, the ulcer has healed and again when you perform the fluorescent dye test you will find a negative so uh, make a habit of performing these examinations these are very important examinations and after 60 days you can see that uh, i will be okay a corneal foreign body is very important uh, aspect is corneal foreign body and uh, i always suggest that uh, as soon as you see any blepharospasm or epiphora in cattle's eye 
always examine for a foreign body and as earliest as you can examine remove the foreign body you will save the cornea otherwise what will happen this foreign body will cause lots of damage to the cornea and it will ultimately cause corneal ulcer and even uh, i tell you um, it will lead to uveitis uh, if it penetrates the cornea and here you can see uh, um, uh, this foreign body has caused this corneal ulcer and uh, uh, by for treatment you can cauterize it and with the uh, povidone iodine just take a wisp of cotton and dip it in the uh, povidone iodine and you can cauterize it and you can flush it with the normal slime and uh, after that you can perform the tarsorephy and for performing tarsorephy again the simple procedure just close the both the eyelids <clears throat> and uh, these are the post operative pictures here you can see the 10th post operative picture and again we perform the fluorescent dye test here you can see the big cornea uh, corneal defect or uh, as a corneal ulcer has healed but a little bit is still there and uh, this will take another 10 to 15 days otherwise uh, and you should continue antibiotic and anti inflammatory drugs and after 60 days this kind of picture you might be seen that okay the cornea has healed now uh, as i will tell telling you that if there is any foreign body and if it is not removed or by any other uh, accident the cornea uh, is lacerated then what will happen the iris will protrude out and if you are getting a, this case after a long time of about 10 to 15 days or 20 days or one month then you will find this kind of picture this is known as ste Uh, staphyloma and there is a fibrinous layer over the iris then you will be confused that okay what is this uh, what should be done and you you will see that the iris is necrosed and a fibrinous layer is over the iris and a thin corneal layer if it is seen then it is known as desmotocele if it is not seen and a fibrinous layer is there complete uh, prolapse of the iris is there this is staphyloma and again for a better examination you have to perform auricular parpebral uh, nerve block and to suture it you have to take the animal in lateral recumbency and uh, even you can give a uh, dialysin sedation uh, under dialysin sedation you and uh, retroval nerve block you have to repair the cornea here you can see that uh, cornea is uh, being repaired and uh, now what to do with this staphyloma then again i am telling you this is a necrosed portion and you have to incise it dissect it out you remove it there will be no bleeding because it is already necrosed but you should not touch the healthy uh, iris portion just the healthy iris portion will be uh, let uh, let it go inside the eye and the necrosed portion will be dissected out and after dissecting out you will see this kind of picture that the aqueous humor is protruding out but you should not now you should not manipulate much and go for corneal suturing that 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 means uh, you should not allow the aqueous humor to uh, leak leak out and just go for suturing of the cornea and uh, for about 10 days you put the eye in tarsorephy you perform the tarsorephy <clears throat> now you can uh, give subconjunctival injections post operatively and uh, after 10th or 12th day you will find this kind of uh, image that uh, you will see that cornea has healed but a uh, slight ulcer like lesion is there and that will heal in time you have to uh, uh, administer antibiotic and anti inflammatory drugs for Uh, the coming 10 to 15 days and after about 2 months uh, of time period you will see that a scar is formed over the cornea but yes it is having vision from this side the animal will be able to see and that is the success of your surgery although the eye will not be normal like the previous healthy eye there will be a scar but even then the animal will be having vision and that is your success 
and many a time you get this kind of uh, corneal uh, perforations and uh, you can see here prolapse of lens and iris both in such cases uh, when you see that yes lens is also prolapsed and uh, um, iris is also prolapsed then better you remove the lens you can see here lens you remove this lens okay and try to push the uh, prolapsed iris back because it is healthy don't cut it don't dissect it out only remove the lens lenticular tissue and then suture it using the uh, absorbable suture material then this is something very important dermoids you see that uh, dermoids uh, i i suggest that dermoids should be treated as early as possible because usually they are congenital i have seen the cases they are congenital uh, rarely or i have not seen any acquired case of dermoid they are congenital so when they should be at least the owner should be make um, made aware that he should report at the early stage and if they are removed at the early stage they are uh, resected out at the early stage then damage to the cornea and damage to the vision can be prevented and these animals might get vision you can see here this is a, a case of dermoid where only this much portion of cornea is visible and this animal is not having any vision there because this dermoid covers this area also so this uh, animal was not having any vision so we operated it and here you can see that complete eye is having dermoids okay so for this you have to perform superficial keratotomy and for this you need operating microscope so you can appreciate that this eye uh, picture number 3 and picture number 6 you completely here you can see that we have removed the dermoid by superficial keratotomy and the cornea below the dermoid is visible and when you can see the fundus through this cornea then fundus can see you the matter is this thus the retina should not be degenerated and usually in case of dermoid the animal is having vision and if you remove the dermoid at the early stage then the animal might regain its vision here you can see that the complete dermoid has been removed and the cornea is now visible here then perform tartarophy and after 60 days you can uh, see this kind of picture that the uh, iris is visible from this cornea so uh, again the matter is this that the iris should be uh, sorry dermoid should be treated at the early stage then uh, you can again see here a case of dermoid this uh, this is pre operative image and this is post operative image both you can appreciate that yes this animal was having little or even no vision and uh, having lots of pain lots of epiphora discharge you can see all this uh, how much uh, pain and um, this discomfort was causing this dermoid and after removal you can see the beautiful eye of this cattle and yes these type of surgeries can be performed at field level and should be uh, at least opted by every veterinarian and uh, here again you can see the uh, tumors some uh, cases of tumors and if they are not squamous cell carcinoma then they will have no tendency to uh, uh, return back and uh, they will not regrow so if you once removed successfully the animals i will be okay and that will the vision will not be hampered but if okay if it is squamous cell carcinoma and it is uh, a tumor of that kind then it will re uh, grow and again ultimately you have to enucleate in for such tumors you have to enucleate the i and for performing this type of surgery again you have to go for retrobulbar nerve block and under xylazine sedation you have to perform the surgery and uh, enucleation as uh, i i was telling in beginning of this uh, webinar that when uh, any student leaves his college he know two things one is 
the diagnosis of any ocular affection is conjunctivitis and another one is the ultimate treatment is inoculation because many a times the cases are reported so in so a bad uh, shape that they need lots of time lots of patience and in field conditions if you don't have these two things time and patience then ultimately your decision will be to enucleate the eye but yes in cases of squamous cell uh, tumors or some irreparable injury to the eyeball eye orbit then you have to go for enucleation and enucleation should be performed uh, uh, under xylazine sedation and retrovalvular nerve blocks and even the uh, approach should be like that that you have to remove the complete tissue along with the uh, lacrimating glands at the eyelids eyelid margin that's why we always remove the eyelids initially we suture the eyelids and then we give a incision over here just beyond the eyelid margins and we again suture it back a give a incision over here and suture after uh, surgery we suture these eyelids so that there is no lacrimation no secretion of the lacrimating glands so enucleation uh, i think it's not a big issue all of the vets might be knowing how to enucleate the eye and here you can see the ligation of opt optic vessels that is very important otherwise it might bleed and trajection of the optic nerve and sheath is there and here you can see the orbital cavity after removal and uh, a sterile gauze i usually prefer to put a sterile gauze uh, in the eye and leave a space in the suturing for this gauze and daily clean up should be there cleaning of the eye orbit uh, orbital cavity should be there and it might take 15 to 20 days to heal up and this is uh, something uh, ecc that uh, means extra capsular cataract extraction and uh, my dear friends i tell you that if you are having a operating microscope always opt this surgery and you will get lots of cases of cataract in cattle and cataract is uh, i think the most successfully treatable cause of blindness if you can treat the cataract and simply what you have to do you have to simply remove this cataractous lens which is obscuring the vision which is obscuring the light to reach up to the retina so simply remove this although we where we are performing we are performing in an ot but even in field conditions you can perform if you are having a magnification power of magnification or source of magnification like operating microscope okay so uh, here the procedure for uh, cataract surgery uh, i would like to explain uh, in, in a brief that uh, uh, put the animal in lateral recumbency then go for uh, retrovalvular nerve block retrovalvular nerve block here will help you in uh, two ways it will bulge the eye it will bring up the eye uh, 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 on the upper surface near the eyelids so that you can easily operate if the eye is already sunken and uh, then uh, just you, you can use this kind of drap placement this is readily available in the market and use this eye speculum you can see here the eye and uh, just give a incision at 10 o'clock position at the Uh, clear corneal incision can be given and even the limbal incision can be given if you are uh, not uh, expert that much then you can start with the limbal incision also just just give a incision at the limbus this is limbus where the cornea and sclera are meeting up this is limbus so just give a incision over here or if you are expertise in this thing and you can give a incision on the clear cornea then just go for a clear corneal incision and enter the anterior chamber here you can see then just uh, inject the trypan blue injection that will stain the anterior uh, capsule of the lens that will help you in capsular axis because you have to perform the capsular axis and you have to uh, remove the lens uh, leaving behind the posterior lens capsule if you do not remove this anterior lens capsule then you might uh, completely remove both the um, the lens along with its anterior and posterior lens capsule so 
to avoid this you have to uh, do capsular axis a capsular axis should be done that means anterior capsule should be removed and then scooping of the lens can be done in the, like here you can see the intact lens is scooped out from the incision now this incision you can go up to 180 degree incision don't fear go up to 180 degree incision but you have to suture it back very smartly suturing is very important that i will show you in the coming slides now here in corneal suturing what important is that you should not uh, pierce the uh, complete uh, um, layer of the cornea that means the endothelium should be left untouched and only the epithelial and stromal layer should be sutured with the uh, surrounding surface either with the limbus or with the cornea and here you can see the smart corneal suturing has been done and after suturing the cornea and removing the lens then you have to go for tarsography to protect the um, uh, cornea protect the operating eye even you can uh, give the subconjunctival injection of dexamethasone and uh, gentamicin then uh, i drap these are also available in the market and ultimately you have to bandage the eye again uh, after 10 uh, there you will see that this kind of Uh, corneal hygienes will be there a complete corneal hygienes near the uh, incision line can be there and these uh, absorbable suture material absorbable sutures might take 20 to 25 days even 25 days to absorb completely and after uh, about 40 days you will see this kind of uh, cornea that the corneal hygienes or the corneal opacity is just near to the suture line and rest of the cornea is gaining the clarity and now this animal will, will be having vision from this side and uh, again after 40 days you can perform the uh, fluorescent dye test to uh, confirm whether the, the cornea has completely healed or still there is some uh, wound or the corneal epithelium and if you find that yes okay it is negative then you just um, tell the owner to Uh, daily clear up daily clean up the eye with even the normal saline solution and after 90 days you will find this kind of cornea and this animal is having a good vision so you can opt for this uh, cataract surgery uh, ecc uh, basically ecc at the field level also and after performing cataract surgery you can uh, see that uh, this type of bandages this has been developed at uh, that gosala level also we have developed this bandages because if you daily uh, uh, go for bandages and at six time you have to instill the drops so it is not a, a easy task that to every time you open the bandages and again bandages and you will waste lots of bandages so better you can prepare this kind of uh, Uh, eye lid uh, eye cover and just remove this put uh, instill the eye drops and again put it back so um, this is a simple procedure and uh, if you expertise in this you can perform this at field level also okay now to conclude this was uh, uh, all about today's webinar and uh, i tell you to conclude that besides conjunctivitis uh, diagnosing uh, conduct, conjunctivitis you can have all these kinds of all these types of uh, diagnostic on your prescription slip like eyelid dermoids eyelid tumors third eyelid uh, abscesses eyelid tumors third eyelid tumor then prolapse of nictitating glands conjunctivitis simple subconjunctival abscess hemorrhage tumors iris prolapse staphyloma you have to Uh, be aware about these terms and once you see this kind of cases have a complete study of this this kind of cases and once you treat it you will get lot of confidence then corneal dermoid very important corneal wounds would be there corneal ulcer and cataract my favorite exophthalmia microphthalmia panophthalmia and 
like corneal edema, all these you can add on to your knowledge. And you can, uh, next time when you approach any animal or you see any cattle with some ocular affections, just search for these affections. One of these affections you might be uh, seeing in uh, that cattle's eye. So I think uh, that's the last slide. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for a uh, patient's hearing. And uh, now the session is open for question and answer. Dr. Shinde. For Dr. The, uh, thank you very much, sir. Before we go to this question and answer session, okay. we are lucky. Today we got uh, Dr. Honorable Dr. Uh, T.K. Gallo, sir, with us. Oh. Your uh -huh. mentor. mentor. I wanted to say that sir should share some experience. Over yes, to Piki sure, Galler, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Can you listen to me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, okay. We know the in recent time the importance of uh, upcoming veterinary ophthalmology, but uh, the cost of uh, animals has risen like anything. Nobody would uh, buy a blind animal. An animal with ulcerated eye, animal with uh, neoplastic eye. So uh, when uh, Dr. Jirwal was uh, very much interested in ophthalmology, uh, we uh, looked into the goshalas where there were uh, big uh, blind animal wards. And uh, we received an invitation from Jodhpur Goshala and we visited over there and uh, we got a lot of uh, experimental and clinical material directly uh, to deal with. And the trustees were ready to spend any against of the cow. And uh, then uh, we started going over there. And though by that time, there was uh, no official MOU with the Goshala and uh, Dr. Jirwal, I think he spent his many of the holidays over there because uh, he was having assignments at college also. He was doing uh, cataract surgeries in college also. So then he used to steal time uh, out of his holidays, Saturday, Sunday, and other holidays. And he used to go over there. And that resulted in a uh, volume of the research which was done uh, in form of the uh, master's research and the doctorate research. And uh, Dr. Jirwal started receiving uh, very good accolades. He received three consecutive gold medals and many other awards, coveted awards from the university, a very good recognition. And uh, we were able to establish the ophthalmology super specialty center in Rajuas. And uh, that was uh, first of its kind because uh, we had one uh, Dibaska project of ICR and uh, some of the funds we received from that. And uh, then we were very much thankful to the Royal Trust of Bikaner, that is Maharaja Ganga Singh Trust of Bikaner, uh, who donated us uh, many instruments of uh, worth lakhs uh, to develop this uh, super specialty center. So Dr. Jirwal then emerged out as an eminent veterinary ophthalmologist in India for small and large animal both. And still, I must say that uh, there are a lot of challenges ahead in ophthalmic surgery in small and large animals. Number one, establishing infrastructure for diagnosis and treatment, then training the veterinary surgeons and supporting personnel in carrying out the ophthalmic diagnosis and surgery and post-operative care. Then developing special eye bandages, hoods for large animals, as you, he has shown in uh, last slides, that uh, cataracted, cataracted uh, cow which were operated, he has covered all those with a very special hood. It's necessary. Uh, bandages, they do not work. Then motivating Goshalas to develop infrastructure of operation theater and post-operative wards, equipments, so that trained personnel can carry out operation on the spot. Then motivating many masters and doctorate students to carry out more and more ophthalmic surgeries. And lastly, uh, Dr. Jirwal will agree that uh, we have a lot of problem. Blind animals, they cannot see you. There are 600 blind animals in one enclosure. If you yeah. go, they, they can hit you. 
so uh, we can use next time drones to spot the blind animals to spot that how many of these are there because goshalas uh, in rajasthan they are very big they are very big so uh, uh, i will at last uh, thank uh, alembic to choose this uh, a upcoming uh, topic a very hot topic as veterinary ophthalmology in large animals and a right speaker uh, for this purpose dr jirwal today he gave very lucid and vivid description of diverse ophthalmic disorders of uh, a large animal uh, ocular affections and uh, hopefully uh, with such a good explanation and pictures uh, field veterinarians and other veterinarians uh, they will be greatly benefited and uh, hope we will continue this research and we will continue to collaborate with the uh, alembic as well thank you very much uh, dr karmanidhi thank you so much thank you thank you very much sir for your kind words and you know you have explained much better than what i have given the description in the beginning so that is why i requested uh, you to speak about uh, dr jirwal uh, thank you very much sir uh, dr santosh you can go for this question answer session now uh, i will request uh, dr naresh kulkarni to display the question so sir can take uh, question yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you sir there are uh, few interesting questions during uh, your webinar sir you have answered few of them and uh, few are enlisted here that what is the treatment protocol for the blindness in newborn calves uh, look dr harish kalra uh, treatment for uh, treatment protocol for blindness in newborn calf first uh, the protocol of the first step is you have to diagnose that what kind of blindness it is okay blindness is a wide aspect you have to uh, first of all you have to concentrate that either the blindness is of retinal uh, origin or it is of cortical origin or you can grossly examine if it is having dermoid or any corneal opacity or uh, many a time you will find the congenital cataract also in calves so the important thing is first you have to diagnose then you have to set a protocol that means the first step is diagnosis diagnose the uh, affection either it is of uh, corneal origin of lenticular origin of retinal origin or cortical origin you have to differentiate these four things and after that you can move ahead in the uh, respective direction of the treatment thank you sir so the next question is please elaborate about the atologous serum therapy for corneal uh, ulcers especially Its efficacy and duration of the therapy. Uh, Dr. Shushma Chawra, uh, yes, autologous serum therapy has been mentioned in many books, and uh, although uh, we are using, but you know, uh, nowadays uh, besides this autologous serum therapy, there are many good uh, treatments available. Even then, in field conditions, yes, I appreciate this. If you are having uh, not having that much of medicines at your level, then autologous serum therapy can be used but it should be used for as long as about 20 days and you should uh, supplement this serum therapy along with the cauterization for the corneal ulcer cauterization with some uh, po povidine iodine uh, you can use povidine iodine uh, for cauterization and along with cauterization you can use the uh, serum therapy autologous serum therapy but for that you know you have to preserve it in refrigeration and if it is these uh, facilities are available uh, at a livestock owners uh, door step then you can go for autologous serum therapy also thank you sir what type of anesthesia we should use for eye affections or eye surgeries in the field conditions dr uh, alka singh dr alka singh uh, Uh, anesthesia for uh, eye affections you know most of the uh, eye affections can be treated under uh, regional anesthesia of uh, eye that means retrobulbar or four point nerve blocks uh, can be used uh, but in uh, you know but if you are treating a large animal uh, if a, a adult animal then better you should uh, go for a gelatin sedation take the animal in lateral recumbency and uh, then you can also add on with the 
local anesthesia like uh, retrovalvular nerve blocks thank you sir what what is the treatment of corneal opacity in case of bowens uh, uh, as i told you that uh, first you should diagnose uh, the gravity of the uh, corneal ulcer that what kind of if it is just a superficial corneal ulcer simply using some antibiotic anti inflammatory and daily cleansing with normal saline will help you out but if it is a deep ulcer or uh, if it is a kind of uh, uh, you know uh, the dermatoseal type of ulcer then you better go for uh, uh, conjunctivitis plus t along with uh, using antibiotic and anti inflammatory therapy thank you sir so if we have to uh, wash the injuries or the wounds in the eyes can we use covidin iodine or we have to do it with the normal saline your opinion uh, uh 5% covidin iodine uh, can be used for cleansing the eye but it better if you uh, mix this 5% covidin iodine with the eye, either with rl ringer selected you can use or uh, simply if you want to use normal saline also then uh, it will work for cleansing of the eye you can use no problem with this and even if you um, are having uh, rl simply with the rl also you can use clean the eye okay, there is a question from dr adesh kumar that uh, please suggest us a good ophthalmology textbook for large animals dr adesh there are many books uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, ophthalmology and uh, i prefer that uh, slater's ophthalmology veterinary ophthalmology by slater and uh, one of opt- veterinary ophthalmology by gillet you can search any of the books with these authors uh, just go for david mux ron offrey and then uh, gillet and gillet and you can search many books uh, on online and soft copies are also available and if you are interested the uh, soft copy of slater veterinary ophthalmology by slater on uh, opry and uh, david mux is also available online you can uh, have all these books thank you sir uh, dr jinnaria asked in case of keratitis as you mentioned that the gentamicin and dexamethasone for 400 kg body weight how much would be the dose uh, look doctor the dose is not uh, we are not injecting it intramuscularly or uh, iv the dose is just that uh, the space we are having okay we have to inject it subconjunctival okay uh, i think he is talking about uh, how much dose of gentamicin dexamethasone dexa- Th- these yes, two okay. drugs combination should be give subconjunctival as a subconjunctival injection so if you will take about 5 ml uh, of uh, these uh, both combination then it will form a big blab and it may not disperse so better you get repeated injections but uh, i prefer 1 uh, ml of 1 or 2 ml maximum of uh, this dexamethasone and equal amount with the gentamicin and just inject 1 ml i think is sufficient you can uh, repeat the dose 1 ml gentamicin and 1 ml dexamethasone subconjunctival injection thank you sir uh, dr babulal vishnu he is asking that you know which riboflavin therapy is useful for the corneal ulcer and one more pertaining to corneal ulcer is uh, why we should not give this corticosteroid in case of corneal ulcer in case of uh, corneal, ulcer. corneal ulcer okay okay yes sir. Uh, dr dawre and uh, dr babulal uh, uh, riboflavin multivitamins yes they uh, will uh, certainly help multivitamins even you can give uh, um, uh, vitamin ad3 also helpful and uh, vitamin e is also uh, very helpful in healing the cornea and why corticosteroids are not used yes uh, this is a basic concept dr dawre that uh, corneal ulcer will uh, delay the healing of uh, corneal wounds and they will not let the uh, corneal ulcer heal so that's why we are not using corticosteroids in case of corneal ulcers thank you sir dr deepak sharma asked that you know traditionally some farmer use fine powder of the glass with glycerin <laughs> topically at the eyeball in cases of the uh, corneal opacity not at all not at all 
this is a completely wrong practice yes. many oh. of them are using brick powder okay yes. and uh, uh, brick uh, just they make a fine paste of powder and they are using and the glass with glycerin i don't know what you are doing uh, glass ultimately you can make a fine powder of glass even then that will um, having some granules and that will injure the cornea further so don't go for such type of practice dr deepak sharma being a vet you should opt some newer techniques these were the techniques used when there was no facility of a veterinarian and a veterinarians like you were not in the field so uh, as the treatment has been told by someone okay put the bricks even uh, some of at some places there is practice of using the um, this um, powder many types of different types of powder in uh, the eye so don't use this type of uh, things thank you sir so the last question is what precautionary measure we should take in case of diabetic or hypertensive patients following the retinal therapy or surgery dr kk sardar uh, yes. first i will uh, like to tell you that in case of cattle if you are talking particularly about cattle uh, rarely you will get a case with diabetic and a hypersensitive patient uh, uh, with the um, retinal uh, uh, surgery or a retinal degeneration second thing is that that uh, in case of human beings yes in case of human beings it is advisable that a patient of a diabetic or a hypersensitive patient should be handled with care and ultimately what happens uh, diabetes that has lead to retinopathy will ultimately uh, delay healing and it will not uh, give a satisfactory result and same is in the case of hyper uh, hypertensive uh, patients that there will be there are chances of retinal bleeding after uh, post uh, surgery there are chances of retinal bleeding that uh, might lead to even in severe cases might lead to death of uh, patient and particularly in case of animal you don't bother because we are not performing retinal surgery in case oh. of uh, cattle you just uh, we are just performing cataract surgery and in case of retina i think uh, in india this much is uh, ophthalmology not developed yet that we go for retinal surgery yes okay. in case of human beings it is ad not advisable to go for a retinal surgery in case of diabetic and hypertensive patients thank you sir thank you very much for disseminating your ophthalmology key knowledge to the field vets i would say this webinar was clinically relevant and knowledge in the region for the field vets over to dr santosh thank you narish thank you sir uh, it, it is warm and graceful afternoon to honorable jerwal sir and all the participating veterinarian it is my privilege to propose vote of thanks speech and acknowledge the contribution to those who work really hard to make this webinar successful on the behalf of all the participants alimbic pharmaceutical limited myself dr santosh shinde express my sincere gratitude to honorable jerwal sir for such a informative and applied presentation on diagnosis and surgical management of ocular infection in cattle sir your presentation is actually a eye opener for the field veterinary and faculty as well as student in a uh, Sir, your presentation will definitely help the field veterinary and faculty and researcher so that in future also, sir, whenever they see as per your request, whenever they appeal, uh, rather I will say the request, I, I will say that as your appeal is that whenever any veterinarian will see the case of any large animal case, first they will be, uh, examine the eye and then they will go for another diagnosis. So this definitely the participant will definitely do, sir, from this today onward. and in future also we'll take benefit of such a interesting and helpful session that will upgrade our knowledge and hence we can serve the society just i i would like to brief upon sir we got near about 1300 registration and from that registration presently we got 12 countries participation from somalia bangladesh rwanda malaysia nepal sri lanka ethiopia ghana indonesia nigeria uae and pakistan so really this is not an uh, uh, now not only of indian uh, field veterinarian sir across 12 uh, countries uh, veterinarian is uh, 
taken the benefit of your session, sir. Last but not least, I would like to thank all the participating veterinarians, Dr. Gallows, sir, for his uh, closing remark of the presentation, Mr. P. Karunanidhi, sir, a senior vice president, Olympic Pharmaceutical Limited, for such a, for continuous guidance and support, Mr. R. K. Sharma, AGM Sales, and entire Arambic field staff, and from my team, Dr. Naresh, Dr. Gangadhar Thomre, Dr. Sanjay Latkar, Amit, to making this webinar successful. Thank you once again, once again to Honorable Jerwal sir and all the participating veterinarians. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shinde. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.